Okay, cool. Hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. And this is episode number 284. That's 284 or somewhere along those kind of lines. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing fine. As per usual, if you listen to this via the podcast app and you want to help spread the show, click that little share button, you know, get it all out there. If you're watching via YouTube, hello, smash that like, hit subscribe, comment below. All right? Easy done, easy going. Um, if you're listening via audio, you would have heard a really cool intro that I'm doing now going forward. Um, I think um, that might add a bit more of a production quality to the actual things. I'm just uploading the actual audio rip from the video. So that might be quite cool. And I just like to have a little jingle. So I thought I'd put a little jingle there. It's an inst- I think it's a redone instrument. I know it is. I don't think. You know when people say that stuff? Mm, I think. You don't think it. You know it. Um, it's a re- It's an instrument of like um, this old or this unreleased asap brocky tune i think it's uh shitting me i think it's made by that guy called um what's his name kelvin crash or something like that but it's not been put out yet i think he used to play it rocky used to play that song at the end of each of his performances when he was like you know each gig that he did that would be kind of his like outro song because i think it's like one minute 50 like perfect call like you know punk um time limit of a record but unfortunately um that isn't um coming out anytime soon if it feels like um maybe it might be put out when he puts out his new single or his new album in it it's probably meant to be coming out called all smiles but so far we've not really heard anything from him about the album and it's coming out or anything you know he's doing his artist thing he's out he's in probably paris fashion week now you know what i mean running around being able to buy stuff from uh buying stuff on um uh from the designers directly getting good discounts going to the studios hanging out they probably not really bothered doing the music thing right now at the moment so bless the guy and we'll probably hear it soon but regardless um here we are back on the show uh, stretching out my back a little bit of uh, why you may ask because of uh running distances i've been covering over the last couple of days has been pretty cool i don't know what's on my phone but it's in it somewhere um running a bit at the moment just finished the what four mile run on the way back from work today actually that was pretty cool um one running in a straight line is weird isn't it it's something about running in a straight line that takes it. I guess that's why people like to do little loop-de-loops around blocks and stuff when they're running. I tend to do the same route all the time, especially when I'm doing it in the morning. There's like a little route that I've, I've kind of specced out as like a 5K. But running in a straight line, like usually if you're coming back from, if you're, if you're working, you, I don't know, it depends how people run back home. If you work somewhere in Central, most of the time you are running back home in a very straight line because Central London usually the main roads lead into it are one straight road, isn't it? It's not really often that you're kind of going up a windy street. Uh, maybe un- until you get to your actual area that you live in. Um, but for me, obviously, because it's the main sort of like street, it's like, well, what's that road called again? I'm not going to say it's commercial street. I don't know what that road is. That road from like Old Gate East all the way up until Stratford. Whatever that road is, whatever that massive kind of street is, that's where I kind of have to run. And um, yeah, it's just one straight road. Just running. And, and the only thing you have to be um, conscious of is pedestrians. Which is always interesting, isn't it? I, I don't know what it is about people when they see you running that they don't tend to. I guess because I'm the I'm the bigger guy, isn't it? Like I'm two two twenty and I'm running down the street full pace. It might be beneficial if you get out of the way, isn't it? Because if I I can't necessarily be trusted to have the reflex or the athletic capability to stop, drop, and roll, in it, and spin out of the way and make sure I don't hit you. If I hit you, you're gonna feel it, isn't it? It's gonna it's gonna hurt especially for like the the little frail women or like the girls and stuff but i think because they see you running sometimes i don't think people actually even noticing it they're just kind of caught in a trance just kind of staring. They're, they're not really looking at you they're just sort of like staring into space and then you end up having to like be the one having to move out of the way so i'm very conscious of that so that's why now i try the most thing the most common thing that i do is i try and run along the right at the edge of the sidewalks next to the where the cars are because people don't tend to run up walk on that side because you know, in case you get run up by a car so i'm like literally running that bit but that bit tends to be the most hazardous bit on the street because that's where all the kind of chips are and the pavements are a bit you know sticking out of the place so if you stack and buckle your toe in it you're you know what i mean I'm, i've already had a few uh road injuries due to my inability to see those uh slabs on the floor so it's not the most funnest thing but yeah pedestrians are hard man but again I'm not one of these guys that gets annoyed or starts. Cause I've seen some guys when they run <clears throat> and they bump into pedestrians, the pedestrians will be back away. They do that kind of like, you know, those angry cyclist stuff, like start swearing and shouting at people in the street and stuff. And I don't really understand that. Number one, because you never know who you're shouting at, right? You just need to be aware that, you know, you might think you're a hard ass. You might think you're a bad boy. You might think you're good. You might think you're strong. But 
you know, you never know who you're talking to, innit? So just relax. And number two, like, you with pedestrians, innit? Really, if anything, I'm more of a nuisance than pedestrians walking. Me running, I'm more of a, a nuisance. Like, me running, my big ass running everywhere is actually causing them more stress and harm than actually what they're doing. So I have to be conscious of what how they are feeling in the situation. So I tend to just, you know, give people the benefit of the doubt. It's not all about me. And if I bump into somebody, okay, sorry, just keep moving. What am I going to do? Shout and scream about what? What are you going to do? Uh, am I going to fight a mum of four because her pram got in the way of me running? Or should I Or should I make the, <laughs> the adjustments to kind of move to the left or move to the right? So I try and avoid any friction, any confrontation. Just, you know, just keep it moving. And again, like, it's not that serious really, isn't it? It's just whatever, isn't it? Just keep it going. Um, that's quite cool. But you know what's really funny as well, which is something I have to only admit to myself. I know people won't admit it, they won't be honest about it, but I get a real big satisfaction. <laughs> I feel really good about myself when I run back home and I run past a McDonald's. I feel really good about myself. I look at those fat fucks in there and I'm like, hey, look at me, look at you, I'm a better human. I, I get really judgy like that, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I know, you know, it, it doesn't come from a good place because for sure on a Saturday morning when I'm hungover, the first thing I'm going to do is open my phone and order an Uber Eats and get a McDonald's delivered to my fucking, you know, to my apartment whilst I sit on my comfy king-size bed, do you know what I mean, scuffing my face full of chips. So, you know, who really is a fat ass you know, in that regard? But there is some kind of level of pride, I feel, running past a fast food establishment and seeing people like mid and it's always like you know they always seem to catch they seem they always seem to catch you at their worst time and you always seem to catch them at their worst time right i guess it's, it's that kind of feeling that people have you know people in their head probably have the idea oh, when i see my ex again i'm gonna be fit and strong six packs up but usually when you do bump into your ex it's usually at your worst do you know what i mean you look like a mess you've probably just struck out talking to four girls they've seen it you know whatever it's not the best of times but this, on these occasions, it's always the best time for me. I'm running full pedal. I'm running gear. I've got my band. I love my music. Woof, 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 my neon socks and shit. I look to the left. And people eating you know, in the McDonald's. And they're always like mid-bite. Like. <gasps> and then there I am saying, yeah, you sh- this is what you should be doing. This is my burger, you know? Like getting all judgy and shit. It's just fucking pathetic. But, you know, again, I am who I am, innit? You have to be honest with yourself <laughs> in these kind of situations. Um, but yeah, that's been pretty fun doing that. So that that kind of covers most of my mileage. Cause I'm trying to do ten miles a week, at least minimum. So that's four each way, coming back and forth from work. That helps a bit. And then in the weekend, just do a cut a few sprint repeats, relays, and whatever they may be. Maybe a big run on Sunday, and then they're basically done for the most part. But yeah, it's excruciating. It's hard. It's difficult. It takes a lot out of you, but you know this is the life we lead in it. We can't, can not, we cannot complain about the life we choose. Really, it's a bit annoying people do that sort of thing. And it's like, oh, I'm getting so hard. What I'm doing? It's like, yeah, but you want to do it, though, don't you? Really? So, um, I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, at the moment, so loads of stuff to talk about. Loads of interesting topics I have here listed. So let's not waste any more time and dive on deep. Some of the stuff is stuff i've had from before right i think so maybe i'm not too sure but let's just let's just get on this is let's just, let's just get into it right um let's do this so number one what do we have here supreme spring summer 20 preview this dropped a while back ago i think because the is it the online release is happening to today or tomorrow right i think online i'm pretty sure but you know the deal Supreme put out their preview the other week. Usually the preview is followed by the lookbook and then you get the dates of when stuff is going to drop so everyone knows when they're going to get their stuff and whatever it may be. I think if, if we go to the news, it will probably tell us here right away. Um, Spring Summer 20, 2020, our Spring Summer collection will be available from February 20th at our New York, LA, SF, London and Paris stores and February 22nd in Japan. Our online sales will reopen. Our online sort of shop will reopen on February the twenty seventh of tomorrow, and the US and EU, and on twenty ninth in Japan. So you know if you if you're waiting for your Supreme Fix, you know when to get it. Um, so preview drops and per as per I think it's the common assumption that the spring summer is a bit shit. Most Supreme fans tend to prefer the full winter, and that isn't because of it's not their fault. It's mostly because Supreme is catered towards a male audience, right? Male audience between the ages of like 13 and 25, I'd say. And those guys tend to, most dudes especially anyway, doesn't even those young kids tend to prefer coats and jackets. Isn't it? How many dudes or guys you know who are into fashion 
who own like you know 115 coats but you know only two pairs of trousers quite a lot of them and i used to be one of those kind of guys outerwear was probably my favorite piece of my wardrobe because i think maybe as a dude i can only speak for myself i think we are i think that's why i think that's why people have such a visceral hatred when they see fashiony dressed up guys because intrinsically i think dudes don't do fashion well i think we do style well i don't think we do fashion well and i mean like fashion is a capital f like a like a like this woman what's her name Susie bob bubble right Susie bubble is it Susie bubble Susie buble Susie bubble let's see if it's the right person i'm thinking about Susie bubble Susie bubble yeah this is the one this woman called suzanne lau she's like a bl- she's a is a british journalist and a blogger she's like a fashion blogger right essentially she wears like you know crazy fashion blogger street style stuff that you know you should all well know and love right so this lady here i don't think there's a male version of this like it doesn't exist right this sort of like frolly like patterns everywhere pattern clashing layers upon layers jewelry uh ornaments all this sort of like weird kitschy stuff it's not something that dudes do for the most part we just do style really well so i think if you're a guy and you have a brand like supreme and they make really good outerwear pieces that tend to cover the majority of your body it kind of is a bit of a cheat right in terms of style because it's very difficult to I've, although i've seen it done it's very very difficult to make supreme or any most mostly male street wear kind of brand look bad if they if they've got their outerwear on lock and they do the good job with the outerwear it's very it's very it's very um hard to get those outfits wrong so i think when it comes to spring summer for most guys i think it's a bit more of a challenge about making that thing work right and again some of the stuff is still it's still really good i think some of the button-ups they do the t-shirts the long sleeves, the hats and stuff for summer are excellent. Some of them, especially the shorts. Look, get that up there. Especially the shorts. Shorts are flipping sick. But I think, I think it's probably more of a challenge to wear in general for most guys. I think people tend to like stealth it, but I quite like it. So this is their spring summer 2020 preview. Um, I quite like looking at it just via the squares and seeing what's on there. There's a few pieces on it that I actually like. So let's go through a few of them and just comment on the things that I like and don't like again. Um, it, you know, you probably won't catch me wearing a lot of stuff with the logos on it because I'm just not that age anymore. But objectively speaking, you know, this sort of like, what is this? Uh, faux fur varsity jacket, I think is a really cool flip on the conventional varsity jacket. I think here at the bottom, they don't have, a, it's not an elastic waistband either. So that's pretty cool. It's completely made out of this fur, faux fur upper, whatever that is. Um, and then you've got the nice little, you know, chain on here, hook on the inside too. That looks really cool. So again, it's not my not my style, not something I would wear nowadays, but I can see why that would be appealing. I'm interested to know why they decided to go for the what's the deal with the script to the front instead of it being on the back. I guess maybe it's just a branding thing, right? You want because everyone's. I wonder what that is. What that decision was made, or is that just a reference piece or something from the archive? Like why there's because there's a lot of it recently I've seen in past seasons where they they've just instead of having the the logo on the art, you don't really see, there's not a lot of sleeve stuff anymore. Or little details on the wrist it's all just like always plastered in front of the chest always it reminds me of that era and bape decided to like always put stuff right right bang in the middle maybe it's a conscious decision to kind of boost the brand's uh signal and coverage in kind of your know, media or in society in general but i think people, everyone's mostly aware of what supreme does and who they are really you know so so they need any extra publicity but yeah it, it's a fairly interesting piece I'd, I'd be down to rock something like that if i was that way inclined um this is a really cool one I, i've liked a lot um, i don't know who the art who's the artwork by on the actual jacket so it's a gore-tex anorak waterproof beautiful gore-tex two poly layer uh shell with a embossed logo lining zip hand pockets that are lower front with zip chest pockets velcro tab adjustments at the cuffs and a d-ring tab on the chest so it, it would remind me of some sort of like old futura thing or ramble Lizzie, or maybe even like a stash bit of artwork it doesn't say with the artist so i'm assuming something in-house or maybe something they licensed i'm not too sure well if it was licensed they would have said that they would give someone credit but i like it man right the 90s era of street style from japan and stuff you know an anorak half zip sort of thing you can kind of pop over gore-tex so you know it'll stop the wind make you run faster as well that helps <laughs> um but yeah i think this might be one of my favorite pieces out of all them especially the color the, the red that's banging it looks really really fucking good I'll be all over that. Obviously, in, in the solid colors, you could just probably keep it. Not really that interested in it, but I think the pattern, the spray pattern, looks banging. That's really one of my 
stand out in that so far then you have this where's this a faux suede patchwork hoodie i can definitely pass on that one so let's move um the shirts are always great you've got a painted logo shirt they always they fit pretty well too i think i had a couple that i sold like oxfords actually back in the day and they were really really good i think they were modeled on like brooks brothers cuts of oxfords and stuff so they usually have a really good uh boxy slim boxy but slim sort of fit and um yeah again if you wanna if you're the kind of person that can't you know can't see yourself wearing any other shirt apart from the supremes and but you want to get you know level up your style and get a bit mature quote unquote you know you you, you're not you want you're not gonna find a bad shirt in these ones from supreme either they're a bit overpriced maybe for what they are but again it's either you buy this or you buy like something from uniqlo and this is probably a bit bit special so it makes complete sense um loads of cool button-ups as per usual from them Oxford, you've got flannels, of course. Oh, you've got one with Daniel Johnson um, uh, artwork as well. So, RIP him. That's really nice. Um, you've got this. Uh, oh, okay, nice. They've got like a. Is that a calf? I don't know what you call it. Calf can? Is that a toggle shirt? I'm not sure. Is that a calf can? It's not a toggle calf can. What is that? With the. With, it's not with the colorless shirt. The jacket sort of work thing. I quite like the print on this as well. This is quite nice. Oxford denim with like the white on it stitched and yeah some decent plaids in there so shirts you know again I think most of those shirts will probably be a bit more stronger in the winter you have the plaid and the quilted lining you have maybe the zip the zip closure in it so I can see how people prefer winter over spring summer to be honest but still you got this nice jacket here too this is a Supreme and Banson's uh, leathers leathers letter jacket so i'm assuming it's like a motorcycle jacket it's really stiff the arms already bent as well so i'm assuming there's some padding or reinforcement there on the hit on the elbows as well so this will probably go for a pretty penny i'm assuming somewhere in the thousands maybe that'll be retail like retailing at probably but that's really cool jacket as well and then i think i mentioned this previously but i think um i think we might see a time maybe in a couple of years maybe even sooner um where supreme completely stops no, not stops, but they don't do as many North Face collaborations because um, they're doing a lot of these like puffy jackets in house. I remember that was the main thing I remember taking away as a little nugget from a. It's a kind of a streetwear principle, though, and it? it's kind of one one on one tips or one on one codes that uh, cheat codes people usually do in streetwear, where it's like if you can't make the particular thing that you want to make, you just collaborate or you go out and buy like you know i think back in the day it was even different than that maybe it's a bit more diy you'd go and buy let's say some tommy hilfiger jackets right even though you can't make a collaboration with them you'd go buy some thing that has been discontinued you'd make some edits of yourself you maybe paint a sleeve add a few badges change the zips you know you do something to make it your own and then you just kind of resell it to your customers um because obviously they'd want to be associated with that because they love your brand they love the kind of you know DIY aspect of it or the other side of it you do an official collaboration so supreme the reason why they did North Face thing was because they wanted to make their own winter jackets but they didn't have the the means or maybe the capability to do so so they went and went directly to the best people in the industry in North Face, North Face and kind of got them to uh supply their manufacturing their production on that side of things and then to bring come with their ideas but now if you've seen in the last few years they've kind of ramped up the puffy jackets in, that they're making in-house so it kind of makes me think that after a while there might be a time when they just you know leave it and then again i don't know whether it's a contract thing because you know they might have signed a, an exclusive contract with face that is like you know binding for life or whatever or just got you know an extended period of time on it but if that contract renewal does come up come up again or they have to renegotiate i could see them pulling away and just thinking you know what let's just keep it in-house and then we won't sign an exclusivity deal, but what ends up happening is that they'll end up having the opportunity to like do a collaboration with Kanda Goose, do something with Arterix, do something with North. You know what I mean? I think that'd be it. Because I think at the moment now, there probably is a bit of a com- non competitive clause or something, right? So they can't do something with other brands that do an outerwear or whatever industry. So that might probably stop them from doing that. So you never know, man. But that's just an assumption i'm prone out there i'm not sure if this is true look i don't have any inside information as you can tell by the nature of my ramble but yeah i could see it happening in the near future but yeah i quite like this I like, I, obviously the combination of 
you know, safety orange and bright blue is just always going to win for me. So that's a quality, quality piece there. Again, just not a fan of the whole, you know, like screaming what you're wearing with the thing on the on the collar. It's just too much. I'd have to wear it on the other side with the blue. But yeah, I like the color combinations. Again, I think they're very underrated in this, isn't it? The selection of colors and combinations and when not to have a contrast switch, when to have a contrast stitch, what kind of pull tabs they're using the zips. They're all very, very considered. And again, for someone that's been, because they're essentially printing money now, isn't it? They don't need to go to this extent to like make products. They could just like phone it in. And the fact that they do the extra things still is really a testament to kind of how dope of a team they are and as a company in it really they don't need to go to that level of detail they could just do whatever and people would still queue up for it but they always always are still appealing to someone like me who you know has been a fan for them for a decade plus you know what i mean and if you're wearing something before it was kind of you know popular and cool and i can still kind of geek out on this stuff and think it's amazing so imagine the kids coming up with it for the first time they must be over the moon let's just jump off this and probably just go straight to the lookbook and see some other interesting looks on the other things and then we can move on don't be this forever but yeah some great stuff from them as per usual um i'm a big fan of all of it i like that kind of whatever is that a cow print i'm sure that a truck and coat that's really nice um i'm a fan of it all i think again some of their some of these sort of like shell jackets they make are ridiculously underrated people don't give them enough props for how they do those things um and yeah interesting to see what Again, I think with most of the stuff, the annoying thing is that the stuff that I like, people won't like. But then, because it's such a level that it is now, everything sells out anyway. It all gets resold. And then the moment someone, on the ASAP Nast, Rocky, one of those guys wears one of the pieces that I tend to like, it's gone and sold out. It doubles in value. So that's the annoying part. But the good thing is that the options to get your stuff you know, are plenty. There's many stores now. There's proxy services. People on Instagram offer place, you know, offer you the opportunity to pay them some money and they go pick up for you in the store you can buy it second hand you can buy it on reselling sites you can buy them on ebay so there's ways to get into the brand if you want to so and, and again I'm, I'm, I'm always a big believer i think people moan too much about oh the resellers are buying everything but i think if you actually want something you can get it and i mean even if you're willing to pay the, even if you're not willing to pay the money if you really want it you can get it there isn't nothing legitimately stopping you so i mean it just requires a bit more effort but you know if you want to if you want to wear something that's cool and you want to get compliments from strangers in the street you should be you should maybe make a bit of effort into acquiring that item but yeah it's all well and good i love all of it mostly um again not strong as some of the winter stuff but you know you can't tell me jackets like this aren't banging and don't go crazy because they do so yeah loads of great stuff tracksuits and all that sort of good stuff that you can find from one of your favorite brands in the market isn't it so let's get off that one let's move on du, 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 du. what else do we have here to speak about <sighs> interesting article here about the best handbags for men from hypebeast which is an interesting oxy bit of an oxymoron isn't it best handbags for men but i've been thinking about this only because of my um in between phase of my cambridge satchel vivian westwood's thing that i got ages ago when i still worked there so I'm in a bit of an in-between stage at the moment where, for me personally, tote bags are a bit too dainty, right? They're a bit too small. They're not the most practical thing in the world. But then on the other side, messenger bags are too big and clunky. And then uh, kind of like side bag pouch things, you know, those kind of things, they're not something I'm really bang on either. And they're a little bit too small. So you, do, you probably do need something with a bit more, you know, uh, volume uh, capabilities in it. I was thinking of getting that, you know that, um, what is it called? Is it a Damier? Not Damier. What that, what's that Louis Vuitton kind of shopping type thing, right? Because I remember th there was a period in time, especially from people like Hiroshi Fujiwara and Andrew Bunny, uh, who used to kind of, who got me gassed on the idea of carrying around one of these. Um, I think it was, it was probably a Japanese thing, like a staff. I remember Hiroshi did one, he spray painted his on, yeah? So I remember there was a period in time where um, some of the older streetwear dudes, especially some of the Japanese based guys, were like trying to make this cool. They are trying to make this like a thing. These, these, uh, this this Louis Vuitton tote bag. I'm not sure what the actual name of the actual bag is, but I think it might be, is it Never Fall? Is that it? Never, yeah, maybe it's Never Fall because it says the price there. So this one, Never Fall from, from Louis Vuitton. So I remember Hiroshi had, a, had one 
and if I seem to remember correctly, he might have got a custom strap, or maybe he got leather from Louis Vuitton old piece that he had before, and he got them to basically put a strap on the edge to edge of this. So essentially, you had the kind of you know the normal handbag straps here that you hold in your hand, and then there was a strap over that you could put on your shoulder or put across your shoulders, which I thought was a pretty clever idea. And I got the thinking behind it because that sort of like handbag baggy thing, if you've ever been sat next to a girl and she's got one of those things on the train and you quickly peek over, or I don't know, when you glance over once you're sitting, you can tell that there's a, she's like, you know, she essentially fit her whole life into a handbag. You can put water, headphones, books, uh, whatever. It's just, it just keeps taking stuff, you know what I mean? Um, it's, as I, it got probably in the name in it, never fought. But it never quite took off, obviously maybe because you know most people can't afford a legit version of this bag in the first place but it would never was something that kind of gained the attraction and then obviously the kind of uh man per sort of thing came into trend for a bit but again it's just not big enough to really carry the things that a guy would need it's not like we have many things it's like we have just big things isn't it because i think women have different women probably carry many items of like many different items right like lip gloss this that's uh face spray mist whatever the the this one there's always things they carry whereas we just tend to carry big bulky things at the same time so you need a bag you can just chuck it all in and forget about it so i think the handbag resurgent thing in the men's industry makes sense in that regard because i think you know again i don't think i'm uh, unique in the idea of wanting a bag that might be able to fit more stuff in than the stuff that i got at the moment so this is kind of a core article to kind of expand on that. and again that telfar bag is probably a good example of it in it why it's been going so crazy at the moment Da, 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 da. This article from Hypey says In recent years Accessories have become just as important As the clothes that they adorn One in particular have become a street star Must have the Dior celebrating With Dior celebrating its uh, archives By reissuing numerous now sought after saddle bags And Virgil Abloh reimagining men's wear of Louis Vuitton um, carriers Bags have become a fashion week showgoer Staple whether they're wearing one of Jackie, Jack, Jack Meese's miniature bags or the, on the wrist or tapping tire the creator with a vintage Chanel around the neck. Those street star favorites have proved that the man bag has no longer a taboo face. The bag has become a staple for men. It's all right. The idea of a man wearing a bag was until recently uh, laid in, in stigma with the exception of a backpack or gym duffel. Items such as the tote bag and fanny packs have been fairly standard for all genders for some time now but these days handbags are no longer just a women's wear staple instead um they're stepping out in 2020 which would be quite cool to see more brands doing that because again like i said i just think it's a practicality thing i think that's why that's why i tend to like actually just thinking about it i think that's why i tend to like going back to the supreme thing i think that's why i tend to like the ones that they make they make these little patch pat bag satchel things that are probably a little bit bigger than duff a little bit smaller than duffel bag but they're a little bit bigger than the messenger bag and i think that's the kind of perfect size you don't necessarily get from people or from brands nowadays maybe because people don't really want them anymore i don't know but let's see if i can find it here um view all right let's see if this works here let me just quickly get this up on a little bit i remember seeing it thinking yeah that's that's the perfect size of those kind of bags let me see where is it so this is the one right so they make these so they've got obviously the backpack that you all well know and love which is you know this edition of the backpack is goes crazy i love it with the mesh on the front the camo version the red version is beautiful and then they've got obviously the standard duffel bag which might be a little bit too big right so that's like what 48 liters that's a huge duffel bag and then they've got this one coming up now that's the perfect size right it's like what it's like six liters but it's got the it's got obviously the capabilities of it being a messenger kind of like sat not messenger but sort of like side bag but it's also got that kind of width that you can fit more in it like the you know from here to here sort of thing if you get what i mean from where the cup holder thing is so but again it may it might be a little bit too small for everyone's needs and you can't really fit too many books in there maybe you can fit a sandwich and a drink and that's about it right so the the idea that you can maybe have all of that chucked into one of these totes makes complete sense um and again they're priced fairly decently i think as well for the most part but yeah let's, let's see what bags they've chosen here on the list you've got first you've got a gucci morpheus shoulder bag which i'm not really a fan of. i think again that's too feminine for me and doesn't doesn't seem that practical um this number this number from gucci is a perfect hybrid handbag channeling many masculine tropes through its worn leather subdued colorway Ugh, masculine tropes i don't again 
what are you talking about? Versace black leather, man. Purse shoulder bag, again, too small for me. If I'm going to have those kind of pouches, I'd rather just get like an actual pouch, an actual kind of like, you know, shoulder bag thing instead of this little, yeah. Although it does look good on, to be fair, but still, it's a bit too gaudy for me. I'm not a fan. Then you've got the Linda White Astro bag, which looks fairly cool too. It's essentially like an update on those sort of like big canvas cut top bags you see people wearing in like Columbia Road Flower Market. Then you've got the Jacquees Le Gaggio, obviously, um, which is again too small for me in that regard. I quite like this Jill Sander um, cartoon crossbody bag as well with a little zip or the little type of ties at the top. Then you've got this Louis Vuitton puzzle bag, of course, that I'm sure most of you know is really, really doing bits and numbers at the moment. And again, great outfit choice there. Then you've got the off-white black belted carrier camera bag, which, mm, again, not for me. A bit too small. And of course, in my opinion, the sense, so the Telfar um, orange medium shopper tote, which is, I think, some of, well, maybe the standout bag of this season, um, is one of my favorites. Again, you've got the ability to kind of pull it over your shoulder, Bitch, wear it just as a normal toe, big embossed logo on the side, nothing too gaudy. It's perfect. Then you've got the Uber Camp Mini Dia bag, whatever that is. How's that meant to be worn? No, let's get, no, don't tell me, just show me the pictures. Nah, no, not for me. Then you've got the Prada Mini Safiano Leather Crossbody bag. Again, a bit too small, but I guess if you want to wear something that isn't, you know, too blatant you can put it put it over your shirt under your shirt if you go that clubbing that might be a good option for you but you know and it's again it, i say only but for 407 27 dollars or a prada little you know shoulder bag it isn't too bad if you think about it i don't know but yeah um so far my favorite is obviously the telfar shopping tour i think it's a real standout piece this season and i um, can't wait to see how guys kind of take it because it all it takes really is a zara or a h&m deciding you know what these handbag things are in and they just start flooding the shop with them that's all it takes it just takes one of those kind of main stream shops to decide to do that that way and then all of a sudden every guy's kind of trying to go out and get a handbag i wonder how that makes girls think how it makes them feel you know i mean they've had such free reign to do what they want with handbags and get any bag they want and now the dudes just rock up (laughs) they just rock up and start queuing with the girls start selling out or start kind of you know driving up the price of these handbags because dudes want them crazy though but yeah let's move on what else we have here we have the uh Adidas skateboarding gone aloha i think i mentioned the white colorway previously didn't know i'm pretty sure another video but there's a black colorway now at at the moment i'm sure most people will be familiar with so it doesn't give any information about the shoe does it no Hey, this website is terrible. Um, let's let this stuff load. So, I think it's the 25th anniversary, isn't it? With Marco Zardes. I think so. Something along those lines. But I like this shoe that he kind of did with Adidas. Obviously, the white pair is famous for that famous skateboarding exhibition thing he done. Do you remember that back in the day? All right? Let's see if I can find that. It happened maybe a while back. I remember seeing it. When I first started getting into skating, one of those kind of you know, one of those standard clips that you see when you first get into something. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Let's see if I can find it here. Quit this as well because my thing is the memory on this is going crazy. So let me see if I can find this guns clip at the most. Let's get this off. Click here. Let's see. Guns Berlin. No? Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, oh, there's another one here from a year ago, which is pretty cool. But this is the actual one, isn't it? Right? I think it is it in Munich? I'm not sure where it is. Um basically like an old video of the legendary Mark Gonzalez uh, skating during in the art ex- art gallery sometime in the, in the late 90s and i think this was a period in time when you know that there was a there was a time when the art world was obsessed with skating and skaters and that industry right i'm sure in that era tons of little spotty nosed white skaters were smashing all these older women that were going to these art exhibitions because they saw them as some of these like weird toy boys or pet projects because if essentially you know 
most professional skateboarders are like adult children, isn't it? Right? So they're just they're like these Peter Pan figures who never grow up. They're smoking weed, drinking, you know what I mean, fucking around. That's essentially what they get paid to do. So maybe if you're you know one of these kind of fuddy daddy curators at this art gallery and you see this whole gang of like skater kids coming in all dressed in in their amazing skateboarding gear wearing what they're wearing smoking not giving a fuck it's gonna be like oh oh my god who's that boy i mean so maybe that was part of the issue but i remember that that was a thing for a while and then it kind of died out a bit and then of course planners came around you know and everyone started jacking them off so that kind of added to their law but i remember this video at the time it was really funny going around showing all the little pieces and that's and I'm, I'm, I, I assume he was the, the artwork was his the, the polyurethane wool screeching against the walls he was, he was dipped in paint or something but I see him skating amazing going up against people right up against him to the edge riding on the walls it was super incredible to see incredible scene too what was on his tearing up the And of course, uh, this shoe was retro. Uh, they brought it back again just to kind of give love and show some appreciation. Um, so at the moment, you got the black pair out at the moment, which I think are coming. Are they coming out soon or they sold out already? Okay, they're meant to be coming out soon. The black Aloha's here. The product shots on this hey, so, are so bad, isn't it? It doesn't make you want to buy anything, right? Horrendous product shots, like, you know, really, really bad. But yeah, great shoe. All black upper. Some new bucks, suede, and I'm going to say mesh. Is that mesh on there? No, it's new buck as well. Um, so all really good. I love the fact that it's, you know, would you say that's vulcanized? It is vulcanized, right? With the kind of missile comes over the top. I still prefer the white colorway. I think the white colorway was probably the strongest, in this, but I'm not mad at the black at all. I have to be honest. Um, some background information here, some details. Description of the lower super super uh, the lower super shoes, a Nike shoe made in collaboration with Mark Gonzalez, which is cool in it that that they do that. I wonder why they do that, that in that way too. Why don't they just name the shoe after the person that made it, like collaboration wise? They seem to create maybe it's a assumption or the deal is that with Adidas is that if you do a collaboration with them they want it to work so that in the future they can just keep pumping it out right pumping out the product or with that it's not associated maybe close to your name or something that's just part of their maybe it's just a categorization categorization stuff isn't it they don't see any they don't see a separation between collaborations and stuff they do on their own right maybe that's why i don't know man or maybe you should think about it more like the Janoskis, isn't it? The Janoskis are named after Stefan Janoski, who essentially made that shoe because that was his first pro shoe for Nike. Then it got then obviously he sold his shit, majority share back to them. So they own the hundred percent rights to it. So they can just keep pumping out Janoskis, even without his approval, and it still be a thing, right? Maybe that's why I wonder why they don't do just call the guns, but it is what it is. Uh, a premium escape a premium Ada skateboarding shoe designed by legendary pro skateboarding globally renowned artist Mark Gonzalez. Inspired by the ID star fencing shoes worn during his historic 1988 performance in the Space Museum in Eiberg, oh, sorry, Atterberg, Germany. It's not Munich. These Adidas are lower supers, are super sleek and super functional. With their cut low for full mobility, it's one, it's interesting that they say. When it's, if it's a low cut, it's for mobility. So your ankle has more options to move around mobily and maybe potentially break. But then when they have a mid boot, it's usually about uh, stability, right? So that your ankle doesn't move around. But it's like, hold on, if my ankle isn't moving, that means all the tension is going to my knee. So where's the, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's a very odd thing to say. Mobility comes from a low top, stability comes from a high top, but they all can cause injuries, doesn't it? So whatever it is, what it is. Um, they cut low the 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 vintage looking laces and the trifle thread outsole ensure you ride in style. The description of these, I think that what's worse, these product descriptions or the product descriptions they or the descriptions they put on the um albums on the iTunes store, like oh, so if you read them back, it's like what the fuck? Who's if you ever write? It's like um, what's that book title about called um, Dancing to Architecture or something, right? Like. It's hard to sum up. It's hard to put music into words anyway, let alone trainers. So, and not make it sound, you know, just full on cringe. But 
that aside, the shoe itself is really good. I'm a really big fan of it. They've got this weird detail. It's like, yeah, the product code thing, I'm a big fan. Look at me, you can just call up an Ada store and ask them if you've got the, got the, got the actual shoe in stock. Because I remember before when I used to try, back in the day, we used to try calling radio um, stores to try and get to see if there was stuff in stock. And we had even, sometimes you have the product number or, it was like, or it maybe it might have been the code for a particular shoe that was coming out a particular series of shoes that are coming out during that period. It's hard to nail them one down. Um, it's just hard to find out. You just have to go to the store and hope somebody behind the desk had, had your size that wasn't sold or anything. But yeah, this product code thing, I think it's a good idea. Throw it up there in the front. But yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the shoe. It's meant to be coming out soon as well, so keep an eye on that. Again, the white pair for me is probably my fave. I think that was probably the stronger one of all of them, but I'm not mad at black either. I think this is a white here, isn't it, right? the OG white I think I saw that a long time ago but I think this this works out far 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 better it looks incredible man so good oh they still got a white pair available really okay in my side as well or no no it's gone it's all gone don't miss out what is that sold okay cool bad to say it. bloody hell so yeah the, 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 the white the white alohas are the best in my opinion they look amazing a lot of super shoes they look so 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 good and again the product shots look at that what is that guy wearing it's like a is that one of the contestants from fucking love island or something like what is that outfit no socks and cuffed tracksuit pants like jesus christ well, yeah i like the translucent smithsole and you can see the stripes kind of going around it from the outside i like the fact that all the stripes are only on the outsole and not on the in not on the outside panel not on the instep panel I think that's a pretty cool detail. But the product shots are terrible. Really bad. Really, really bad. But yeah, check those out. A lot of super shoes probably coming to you very, very soon. If you're that way inclined. Um, what else do we have here? We've got obviously the Rick Owens and Montclair collaboration that was uh, spoken about. And it was announced, I think, uh, during Milan Fashion Week. Because that's when uh, Montclair do their genius project thing where they invite essentially loads of different geniuses and brands and uh, designers to come and interpret the Montclair idea or what they think Montclair means to them in their own unique way. And I like it because it's, it remind, it's kind of goes back to the street spirit of collaborations, right? The idea that... Um, two distant brands maybe operating in different areas talking to different customers maybe have a different level of expertise different levels of specializations can sometimes collaborate come together and, and let their worlds kind of cross over and clash because imagine some of the people that wear Montclair's you know and they happen to be tourists I've never heard who Rick Owens is right they wouldn't necessarily see themselves wearing any of the stuff that he puts out on the runway but then when you get him to kind of do his thing um, in your studio, in your warehouse, it has, suddenly he's able now to kind of apply his design codes of things you're already doing. You put that in the store and suddenly you have customers who didn't give that, that designer any love or any interest now going to that brand and kind of cut him. So I think it makes good sense. But obviously with this collaboration, it wasn't part of the genius project because, you know, Rick's his own man and beats the sound of his own drum so he decided to do his own little special collaboration of course Montclair didn't, didn't want to say no because I'm sure for them it's a big coup if, if there's one person you want to get involved for your out outerwear sort of stuff it's going to be Rick I mean he's you know he makes some of the best coats in the industry to be fair people and many people have tried to copy that style but you know it's only one person and look at that I think those boosts as well are Montclair no it's someone I'm moving from the same but it's really really cool everything of it so far this is an article from Vogue that details it it says Rick Owen Craft a story about personal intimate space and a tour bus for Montclair so it's here at the front let's get here at the bottom I said uh, what is it saying let's go that's, that's a common phrase they use on his articles isn't it world builder but let's continue Rick Owens is a world builder a creator with a self-assured authority that allows any item or idea to be owned It's uh, best evidence, of course, in his fashion and furniture design, but those are just two of the most readily available products that he makes. Think bigger. Think of Owen's entire life, a place where a sphinx cat roams a brutalist place, Palace and Man, Paris, where platform disco boosts are worn on the metro, where dyeing one's own hair is trance like ritual. Owen's latest endeavor sees the designer offering a whole new way to enter his universe via a tour bus. Owens expresses 
uh, will be rolling into the Milan Wednesday as part of a collaboration with Montclair that includes ready to wear pieces designed for Owens and his wife, Michelle Lamy, as well as a custom bus. So Montclair were that desperate to get Rick on board with this project. They gave him, they absolutely, imagine the budget that goes into this, man. Like flying these people out, hiring out the van, getting the van kitted out to look like his apartment in Paris, which is insane, right? I've seen pictures of the inside of the van. It's just nuts that they were able to get that kind of level of detail involved in the van, but they did it. And then, of course, to do the collaborations. Like, it's just insane. Like, they definitely just ripped the budget out. Whatever, gave him a blank checkbook, says, right where you want. Do you know what I mean? Um, while the project will launch at the same time as Montclair to invest in 2020 additional genius project, Owens collaboration is totally separate. I'm not sure I'm really a group person, he says, which I would have found really funny. <laughs> Imagine you get invited to like a group collaboration project and you still want to do your own thing. That's like the height of annoyance, isn't it, for the other people in the room? Like, looking at us, like, what? what? Does he not think we're cool enough? Yeah, that's exactly what he thinks. He thinks you guys are losers. Um, he says here, he slightly says over the phone from his house in Paris where just uh, he's just uh, risen from his daily afternoon nap and will continue to head and will soon head to Milan to prepare his presentation. He says still when Montclair came calling Mo- Owens chose not to resist. I've, I've heard that a lot from a lot of the established people. I'm not sure if it's because of the the fact that a lot of the more established heads who are becoming more socially social media active are going out on media and realizing, oh shit, I'm way behind, right? And they're seeing people, you know, with less talent, less time in the game, all that stuff, really su- surpassing them. And I think a lot of those are like, hold on, I'm really good at this. I'm legit a good actor or actress. I'm a good stand up comedian. I've got a good TV show, all that stuff. And imagine you going on there and seeing some 13 year old girl that can't lip sync, you know, crushing it. It's going to get you a bit, you know, annoyed or de- no, or, or mystified like how the hell is this possible so i think because of that let's go back to person with the, 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 the play here what was that what, what did i make his point about personal eyes or who was it the, 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 i don't know why i made that even point in purpose what are you saying about so let's continue still when one guy can call in collaborations um under the worst of circumstances are like all sensation and hype he says right there's no one more conscious of that than I am, which is true. I think he's wrestled with that fact quite often, which is why we don't see many, or we've stopped seeing Adas as in Supreme. I mean, Adas and Rick Owen, sorry, he completely kind of um, put a caboose on that one. Once he thought it was kind of getting a bit played out, a bit you know corny, a bit desperate. And then also might be a fact that, you know, he lives in Paris, I'm assuming he has a very... And he's a fashion, you know, he's part of the... He loves the game, so I'm sure he has very strong opinions about, you know, who wears his clothes and who wears it best and I don't know there must be a loving relationship if you're a designer at that level and you see, yeah, it must be the same with Virgil isn't it? if you if you're making clothes and none of your friends wear it unless you give it to them free but then you go to any major city area where you know there happen to be like Asian students there they're all decked out wearing your stuff but they make it terrible right I don't think I've ever seen one Chinese or, or Asian exchange student who has a lot of disposable income and buys every brand under this or buys every brand they're told to buy and browns ever look good in the outfit they don't simple as that i think most people with money don't look good in outfits you know people that are just like skirting by and just making do what they have paid to it usually dress quite well because you know you're having to make do with what you have circumstances wise you can't you know you can't suddenly get jump into your tesla and go and pick up a, a new pair of Arizona mcqueens you know what i mean you have to make those stands work so Here's a go. Da, da, da. He says, I mean, I'm the first to roll my eyes about collaboration thing, he says, but the other side of me thinks that my um, excuse for people to intersect, uh, intersect her, especially in the fashion world, and especially somebody like me, go uh, go out, to go out and kind of in, intersect with other fashion bubbles is something I really approve of. Cool. I also thought it would be fun to talk to a whole collab uh, dynamic and instead of making it all about me being around and still about make it a story about intimacy um authenticity and about relationship it's an insular it's an ins- incu- insular right? insular story about privacy and about the personal intimate space but i like the fact that it's a journey to through the entire american midwest i think we're into what is it la or whatever they're going to drop off to I quite like that idea. Jeremy taking a road trip, revisiting some old memories, tying things back in together again. I think it's quite cool. Uh, to turn around, da, 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 da. 
Here's some images of the jackets as well. Just great piece that you've probably seen already from the women's collection. Uh, done, of course, in a very Montclair way. Silver puffer jacket looks insane. They both go off. Um, the personal motivator for Queens is to accept Montclair's offer was an invitation from the new, from the artist Michael Heiser to see his monumental land uh, city. Oh, that's amazing. Um, in the uh, desert, he and Lammy had been wondering how and when, when to make the trip out west to see the piece. It's spooky and it's eccentric and extreme and it's so heroic. It's kind of an underground thing and I just couldn't resist. I mean, I jumped at a chance and it says, where does Montclair come in? The Italian outwear brand worked with a designer on the collection that refabricates some of uh, him and Lamy's most worn garments into a high puff Montclair down. It also facilitates one of collaboration with the tall bus company. <laughs> Amazing. Creating a brutalist uh, bus to transport others and Lamy Owens and Lamy to from Los Angeles where he would be sending his latest set of books to the dearest. I love it all, man. So it all came together. But yeah, definitely check out the interview. It's really cool. Best information from him as per usual from Rick. And, you know, no one wears his brand better than he does personally, I think, out there, man. Um, so yeah, definitely going to keep an eye on that and see what that does in the stores. But I reckon they will be quite popular, even if they go for a couple of grand. No one's going to have shit to get, like, you know, a month player they're actually going to wear um, day in, day out. So yeah, fair play to them. Du, 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 du. What's next on the list here? Oh, we've got a couple links as well, just like street readings. I want to just put you to buy and see if what is here. I haven't actually titled these links, so it's going to be a bit of a freestyle on this one. Not that everything else wasn't, but um, yeah, what is this now? Supposedly, you can now buy off white and fragment ones or at a place called what? One block away. What is that? Italian re retailer One Block Away has announced that some of the. Okay, this is interesting. Let's read this. It's for Highest Nobility. Um, Italian retailer One Block Down has announced some of the best retro Air Jordans released from 2009 to 2019 will be available to buy at retail. Well, the sneakers included. The customers are required to buy a pair. Oh, these guys are clever, man. They're fucking clever. So, in order to get you know, a chance to win, which is not guaranteed. You have to buy this shitty Jordan. What is this? Milan. What does it look like? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll pass. They want you to buy this dead ass, this, this dead shoe, right? A shoe that they probably can't get rid of and sell. And then that will enter you into competition for you to, you know, win a set of those. Oh, he's a terrible. He's a so bad, man. Wow. He's a shit. No, thank you. No, thank you. Also, bro. Nah, not for me. You might have to buy those so you can buy the Jordan that you actually want. I guess, in some respects, some people would argue that, oh, that's a decent investment, right? You pay whatever it is for those, you know, crap. And then suddenly now you've got a shoe that's worth 600 quid or $800. You know, it keeps going up and up and up. So I get the thinking behind it. But again, I think there's a lot more interesting things you could do with that initial Jordan investment in your life than you know, looking for sneakers and trainers and stuff. It just isn't, you know. Uh, not for me personally not for me go into a story here uh, <laughs> Italy, da, da, da. customers are required to buy the edge of the one Milan okay installed the one block down on February 19th after which they are given a bracelet with the bracelet with the bracelet they can enter one block down's house of judgment jumper and the free throw game in excuse the customer if a customer makes it makes all the free throws they unlock a digital archive and can select one pair from the from t to buy a retail okay cool that's right if everyone wants it uh, but yeah it the, the likelihood you know it's kind of random as well you know, like, it was kind of um gambling site hustle that a lot of people were pushing on youtube a while back i think logan did one too like weird gambling thing um rascal rascal of course did it but I don't necessarily see like a, a thing to get annoyed by really in that regard. But yeah, what do I know about it? But yeah, it's an interesting ploy just to get their media current out there. People are talking about the brand a bit, but you know, it's a bit nasty as well. Get people to buy a shoe they don't want so they can have the shoe that they do want. Wow. That's a hustle. That is a legit hustle. But yeah, not for me personally. Not for me. Let's move on here. Yep. Get that off the screen. Do, 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 do. What else do we have on our list here to talk about quickly before we head out? Uh, 
Uh, more links. Let's get some other links as well. Let's do some quick streetwear hit links. Let's just go through all of them, bro. All of them. What's this? The Nike be true to your school dunks are coming back again. That's that's a. Uh, they're really trying to push this dunk agenda on us, but I don't think the kids care, man. I really don't. I think the, the kids would rather wear a pair of Jordan ones and be seen dead in a pair of dunks, isn't it? And I remember having them as well. I had the, is it Swade Syracuse, whatever that color it is? Like, it was a good time. But I don't know if they actually give a shit. But anyway, let's just go through the thing. Nike's iconic Be True to Your Dunks are coming back in 2020. Um, during the All-Star Weekend in Chicago, images of a reportedly fought coming Syracuse and Kentucky Dunks were hitting the web. Okay, so it's, um, David Booker was spotting the Syracuse dunk, Nike Dunks. While native uh, Chicago and Don C posted the same white and orange low tops. Several news sites also reported that Booker shared images of the new white and blue Kentucky lows, which seems fitting for the boy. Booker, sorry, for considering he's in the numbers of Kentucky. But yeah, interesting to see how they see this stuff, isn't it? Sneakers is still kind of not really in the, it's digital, but it's, they see it in a very old school approach, isn't it? Like, you know, hey, you might want to check this out, or people spam me with this, and then you get hit with that, and then you're at a club, and someone says this. That's it. That is still how those things are getting generated. It's interesting to see that they, even though they fabricate the numbers, even though they've created this, like, you know, engineered level of scarcity by, you know, and essentially not making enough people to buy that actually want to buy them. And in general, it's just like a shitty scene, isn't it? It is what it is, isn't it? Like, it, it kind of attracted some shifty, um, grifter kind of types in there so i'm surprised this is basically happening um again i didn't wish any harm at the time i didn't know who she is i don't really care but you know you just got to sit this one out go you put, go on a bit of a social media diet or you know an exit and then come back the next day innit? that's what you have to do basically but um the nike uh nike dunks huh Again, I'm not too sure they're going to make a comeback. I just don't see kids. I just don't know, man. Unless there's a full court tilt press in terms of bringing back that late 90s, early 2000s era. I just don't see it happening nowadays. I just don't know you could engineer it and make it happen and make people care enough. It's got to be organic. It's got to be something like, oh, some of the quote-unquote swaggy I do on Instagram saw the shoe in a random shop somewhere on sale and then bought a few and then started putting them in their fits and all of a sudden everyone's wearing them. You know what I mean? That's that's how it would maybe work. But this all-star weekend thing, giving it to all of Kanye's old friends, it's just a bit like, oh, really, do I need this? I don't know. But again, you know, be true to your school. I think I'll, I'll be interested to see here what, to see actually what the it does when it comes out. The packing because I remember first time around they didn't do well they didn't do too well I remember still finding a few uh sitting around or you know quote to quote to full or near enough to the full size run of them and you know now they have more reference points they have more better they better designs and still they don't really trust them into making that kind of season so to each their own and to each their own but I just don't know if I can get on board with that one I think that's a little bit too manufactured from even for my liking cool so next on list here we have i think that might be it you know yeah i think that might be it for now let's end it there because the rest i can probably do on another show hopefully tomorrow i'll leave that for you now um as per usual if you're listening via the youtube app smash that like button hit subscribe leave a comment down below if you're listening for the podcast app hit that five star review and share it with your family and friends as per usual more information regarding myself click the link below xnozinga.com or one word dot como and i'll see you guys very very soon take care be safe bye